Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Fortcast, the official podcast of Fort Healthcare. I'm your host, Dr. Michael Anderson, ear, nose, and throat physician, and president and CEO of Fort Healthcare. And I'm happy to introduce two of my guests today. We have Katie Lubke with us, who is our radiology manager, and Laura Jacobson, who is a nurse with us and also the breast care coordinator. Today's topic, we are going to be talking about screening for breast cancer and the importance of a screening mammogram. October is a Breast Cancer Awareness Month and it is extraordinarily important to get those mammograms done. So with that being said, Katie, I'd like to ask you a question. So if one of our patients and community members wants to have a screening mammogram, how do they go about doing that or what are their options to do that? Sure. There are a number of ways to go about that. So it's important to note that a screening mammogram can be self-referred. So you do not need to connect with your primary care physician to schedule a screening mammogram. You can call the radiology department and our staff can get that scheduled for you. Alternatively, you can see your primary care physician and request that they order a screening mammogram and follow up with radiology to schedule that. It is important that we have your primary care physician on file so that they can follow up on the results of your mammogram. Well, that's wonderful to hear. So if I understood you correctly, Katie, a community member can call the radiology department directly and schedule their mammogram. Absolutely. If they are not experiencing any breast concerns, breast pain, or problems, that would be considered a screening mammogram, and they can certainly call directly to us to schedule that. Most often, insurance will cover a screening mammogram for women who are aged 40 or older. At times, those criteria change if the patient has a strong family medical history of breast cancer. So Katie, are there any walk-in opportunities for patients? Absolutely. So we have a wide variety of scheduling options for our patients. We do routinely hold several weekdays, Mondays and Wednesdays. We have late mammogram appointments available. By late, I mean that we can schedule as late as 5 p.m. This upcoming October, we are beginning a new initiative. It's going to be called Walk-In Wednesdays. So the first Wednesday of every month, starting this October, patients can walk in without an appointment if they are in need of a screening mammogram. So they can walk in between the hours of 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. and have their screening mammogram performed without an appointment. Well, that is absolutely wonderful for our patients in our community. If somebody doesn't have health care insurance, Katie, are there any options for them to have a screening mammogram? Absolutely. So several years ago, we, Fort Healthcare, created a program called our Mammogram Voucher Program. And this program supports women in the community who do not have insurance or are underinsured and will allow them to have a screening mammogram at no cost. To obtain a voucher for a screening mammogram, they can see a provider at Fort Healthcare or they can come to the radiology department and we can supply them with one in the department. Well, that is wonderful as well. It's so important to have the screening mammograms done. So Katie, when somebody comes to the department to have a mammogram, what can they expect? Like, can you just walk us through the process a little bit? So patient will arrive in the radiology department. They will check in at our front desk and they will be given a questionnaire to complete in the waiting room related to their breast health history. They will then take this form. The technologist will come get them from their waiting room. They will take the form with them and the technologist will review their responses in the mammogram room. They will then be asked to change just their top half into a gown, and the technologist will proceed with obtaining roughly four pictures. So they will be positioned using our imaging equipment for two pictures of each breast. 
Sometimes the number of pictures varies just based on patient specifics, but the length of the procedure itself is really about 10 to 15 minutes. It's quite fast for a screening mammogram, and then the patient will leave the department at the end of the exam, and results will typically be ready for the patient within 24 hours. Okay, so that sounds like a pretty streamlined process. So then in summary for our visitors to this podcast, a screening mammogram can be done through multiple different measures. One is a referral from their physician. The other is through walk-ins or even the voucher program. So that is wonderful access options for our patients in our community. Now, one thing I learned a little bit from Dr. Erickson on a previous podcast is that there is a big difference between a screening mammogram and a diagnostic mammogram. So a screening mammogram is when you have the initial mammogram done, and then if there's an abnormality found, that triggers a diagnostic mammogram. So Laura, as the breast care coordinator, can you speak to a little bit of the difference between the two different mammograms and your role of involvement in uh, patient care as they go through this process? Sure. So with the screening mammogram, the radiologist will review them. And if they see anything new or different from a previous mammogram, our radiology staff will call the patient and have them come back for a diagnostic mammogram. That is going to be targeting that area that looks different or new. The patient is scheduled for a diagnostic mammogram and a diagnostic ultrasound and the imaging is done. The patient will get results at that time for the mammogram and ultrasound. So Laura, once an abnormality is seen on a screening mammogram and then they have the diagnostic mammogram and potential ultrasound, they get those results right away? Yes, our radiologist will review them once the imaging is done. And then if there's any further recommendations, the radiologist and I will come in and have a further discussion of what the findings are. So Laura, are you the one or is the radiologist the one to sit down and go over the results with the patient? Who does that? Do you do that? No, actually the radiologist will go what they found on the imaging, whether it's on the diagnostic mammogram or the diagnostic ultrasound what the results are, and what is the recommendation. So obviously, if nothing is found, that's great news, and likely the patient leaves with the results. What happens if something is found on that diagnostic mammogram? Sure. So if something is found on the diagnostic mammogram with the results given to the patient, after the radiologist is done talking to the patient, I will have the patient come back with me to my office, and we kind of further discuss what the next one to two weeks may look like for them. We have a brochure that's a breast biopsy brochure that entails what kind of appointments that they might have and the type of biopsy that is recommended for that patient. So after the diagnostic mammogram has been obtained, what further care is required? Once a diagnostic mammogram has been obtained, if there are positive findings, the radiologist is going to recommend a biopsy to further diagnose the finding on the mammogram. At that point, Laura will walk through with a patient what that biopsy will look like. It'll happen typically within one to two weeks, but Laura will guide them through that process so they have a better understanding when they leave the radiology department what to expect for that biopsy. So is that when you would get the surgeons involved and you spend time with the patient explaining what type of biopsy you anticipate to happen? Absolutely. So when the radiologist comes in, they usually let the patient know if they're going to be having, it's called a stereotactic biopsy or a ultrasound guided breast biopsy. And based off of that, I go into further detail for that specific patient, what that procedure would look like. And Dr. Erickson, definitely explained in pretty fine detail the difference between the two different types of biopsies. 
So if there's any listeners that are wondering about that, please refer to the podcast with Dr. Erickson. He does a wonderful job explaining the differences between the two biopsies because he or one of his colleagues are the ones actually performing the biopsies. So that's a great answer, Laura. So a diagnostic mammogram is completed if an abnormality is found and explained by the radiologist. That's when you, as the breast care coordinator, will sit down with the patient discuss potential biopsy, and then get them scheduled with one of our general surgeons. Is that correct? Just to summarize? That's correct. So before the patient would actually leave the radiology department, they will have their first appointment scheduled with one of our three surgeons, Dr. Erickson, Dr. McLaughlin, or Dr. Cotney. And what's the typical timeline on that, Laura? It kind of varies. Usually we're able to get the patient in for a consultation and that is going to be your first appointment with them within the week. Well, that's pretty fast because I'm sure this has got to be very concerning to a lot of people when they find an abnormality on the diagnostic mammogram, even though Dr. Erickson explained that the majority of them are actually benign. That's correct. It's kind of hard for the patient to really have a good thought process of what is going on and really taking in the information that I'm providing them because it's a scary time at that time. Well, I'd like to take a moment and thank Katie and Laura for being on the Forecast podcast. Healthcare is a team sport, so it's been wonderful having two guests on today. And I cannot stress enough the importance of getting a screening mammogram. Again, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. This has been the Fortcast podcast. This is Dr. Michael Anderson. Thank you for listening. If you found this podcast helpful, please share it on your social channels and check the other podcasts that we have in our library. Katie and Laura, thank you again for being on today. Thank you. Of course. Thank you. All right. So long.